at four o'clock is the pictures and then it's at the same place as usual but the Dutch Scott ministering for us there in the one service on Sunday and you can bring one married couple with you uh, you pay thirty dollars for them sign up deadline is February 4th uh, which I think is this Sunday I believe all right and then uh, happy birthday to Adam Roberts I don't see them there his birthday is tomorrow but uh, happy birthday to him I want to go over this uh, cancer prayer list. I don't mention it every service. It's kind of a long list. But remember, let's continue to pray for all these with cancer. Uh, Rex, Kathy Sheridan, Peggy Kemp, Judy, which is uh, Brother Darrell Ward's sister, Jackie Crumley, uh, Shauna Berry, Brother Aaron's co-worker, Jack, uh, Ronnie Johnson, David Mathis, Bobby, which is Sister Cleta and them's uh, sister there, uh, Brother Ron Spencer, Denise Key, and Cheryl Mack. Also, Gary Miner, Andrew McClure, and Danny Green. Let's continue to pray for all of them. Keep them on your hearts. Remember our uh, brother and sister Dale. Continue to pray for them. Pray for our family traveling to Kentucky this weekend, Lord willing. And also, brother, um, brother Bob and family traveling. Brother Joseph and family traveling. And everyone else is traveling. Just, Lord, give us traveling mercies. Sister Rebecca Atkins, uh, she has prayer for her work. Um, they got their W-2 deadline, so they're under a lot of stress right now. Um, pray for them. And also, Sarah Roberts mentioned a praise the other day. She said that uh, she came up for prayer, had neck pain real bad, and the Lord touched her. So thank you. Thank the Lord for touching Sister Sarah Roberts. Also, uh, Brother Colley's got two requests here. Tyler with a bladder problem and also Nathaniel Smith with back surgery coming up. And then uh, prayer, praise report from Jonas, his middle school coach, Caudell, that we've been praying for with, uh, he had COVID, you know, and had lung problems. His lungs are now clear, so thank the Lord. Thank you for your prayers. And also, let's remember Brother Luis ministering for us tonight. And all unspoken requests. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us get to be here tonight, Lord, once again. And thank you for your presence here, Lord. We pray you bless all the unspoken requests the hands were raised for. You know each need on each heart, Lord. Pray help Brother Luis ministering for us, Lord. Just move him out of the way and help him to speak to us what you'd have us to hear. Pray you continue to touch your pastor, Lord, Brother Dale, and all the Dale family, Lord. Continue to give them strength and whatever they have need of, Lord. Continue to thank you for restoring his mind to him and for giving them strength in his body. And thank you for touching uh, uh, Sister Rebecca, for helping her and all of her coworkers with the stress they're under. And also, uh, Brother Colley's request, Lord, for Tyler and Nathaniel. Pray you be with them. Give them uh, uh, health in their bodies. And um, also, thank you for the praise reports, Lord. Thank you for touching Sister Sarah Roberts in her neck. And then also, uh, Jonas's coach. Thank you for being with him. And all the other things we have to be thankful for. Be with all those traveling this weekend. Lord, keep us safe, I pray. We love you and give you praise. We thank you for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you as you're seated. I have good news to bring. That is why I sing for the I'm gonna shout and sing till the heavens ring. Goodbye. Hey, Amen. Now let's go. Uh, let's sing. Where can I go? Good to see Matt. Matt, see. Amen. How you doing, brother? Living below in this so sinful. Where could I? 
Stand this evening. Yes. <clears throat> Are you washing the blood this evening? Amen. <laughs> Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? There's a fountain flowing for the soul, unclean are you washed in blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you 
your garments spotless, you're white as snow, are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Brother, Brother Direct, could you help me this evening? Amen. <coughs> Precious Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for bringing us again, once again, Father, to your house. And Lord, we pray you just come into our midst tonight, Lord, and speak to our hearts. You know exactly what we need tonight, Lord. Just use our brother in a mighty way, Father God, and take our minds off of everything, Lord, off of tomorrow, Lord, off of yesterday, Lord, and may we just be into your presence tonight. Bless the tithes and the offerings, Lord. May they be used for your honor and your glory as we commit the rest of the service into your hands. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. Let's sing uh, the song before we call brother out. Mm. The world will try to satisfy that longing in your soul. You may search the wide world, Lord, but you will be just as before. You'll never find true satisfaction until you have found the Lord. For only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Only Jesus can satisfy your soul and only he can change your heart and make you whole he'll give you peace you never knew sweet love and joy and heaven too for only Jesus can satisfy your soul if you could have the fame and fortune all the wealth you could attain yet you have not Christ within your living here would be in vain there come a time when death shall call you riches cannot help you then so run to jesus for only he can satisfy only jesus can satisfy your soul and only he can change your heart and make you whole he'll give you peace you never knew sweet love and joy and heaven too for only jesus can satisfy your soul. Hey Amen. That's to my mother-in-law. She's struggling with breathing problems this week and be prayed for Sister Audrey. She needs a touch of the Lord. Amen. Let's change all the services. <clears throat> Brother Luis, come this evening. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, 
shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. High and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Good to be in the house of the Lord this evening. I trust that you're happy and uh, good to have Brother Matt with us. Good to see you too, Zach. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Good to see each and every one of you. Um, if we want to, we want to go ahead and uh, turn to our scriptures this morning, uh, or this evening, to Judges chapter 6. Judges chapter 6. We appreciate everything that everybody did for the, for the Ohio group this past weekend. We had a good time. It was good seeing them and having fellowship with them. And they did a good job. And they're singing testimonies. And God's doing a work um, in their, on their end. And so we just thank God for what he's doing over there. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I also want to thank you all for your prayers for us as we were traveling back and forth with Brother Eric uh, the, several weeks ago. And uh, um, he really enjoyed his time, his, his self here, him and his family. And um, and uh, you all helped make that possible for him as well. But ever since that, ever since he was a little kid, he wanted it was one of his dreams to be able to go to Jeffersonville, Indiana. And thank God we were able to be part of that. Amen. So that was he 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 literally said that he he was laying next to his wife in the bed there at the hotel where we were staying at <clears throat> in Louisville, Kentucky, and he said. He told her, he said, I can't believe this is actually happening. <laughs> now, you see, to them, it, it's like it's a big thing, you know. But for us, it's just a common old Jeffersonville, you know, where God did such great, wonderful things. That, But yet we forget about it. But for them, they keep that down there alive. They keep it up because they've never seen it. But you and I that have seen it, we just say, oh, it's just common, you know. It's unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate. I wish we, we would keep, and, and you know, that happens to me too. I'm not saying it's just you all, this happens to me. It just gets, we get, we come to church and everything just seems common. But, you know, when you haven't experienced it and you haven't really, you know, seen it, you know, for yourself, you know, it's something new, it's something fresh. So y'all just pray for them and uh, you pray for Brother Eric, continue to help him in his ministry down there that there is a lot of work to do down there. So y'all just remember them in prayer. Let's turn to, to Judges chapter 6. Uh, let's, let's, and we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to talk a little bit about Gideon this, this evening. And I want to title this, God's calling you out of your comfort zone. How many believe that God is doing that in this hour? The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the easier things are not going to get. Yeah, let me say that again. The closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the harder things are going to get. And just expect it. But God is trying to do something in our lives. Whether it's through sickness, whether it's through family issues, or whether it's through financial issues, the economy, the, 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 the gas prices, whatever it is, God is squeezing the best out of you. Because he knows it's in there. If you've got the Holy Ghost, so 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 he will send whatever he's he he will in order to squeeze what he knows your potentials are. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So let's just bow our heads before we read. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, once again for the opportunity that we have to open back the pages of your Word. We realize, Lord, that we're insufficient within ourselves, Father, and we just ask that you'd have your way this evening, Lord. Speak through my lips. Lord, and, and, and help us, Lord, to receive something from you. Encourage us, Father, 
And Lord, help us, Father, to just move forward, Lord God. And no matter what the obstacles may come, Lord God, Lord, we are, we are people that are focused, Father, focused on you, Lord Jesus, focused on your word, Focus on the end goal, Lord Jesus. And we just pray that you'd help us all. Bless each and every one here. Meet every need amongst us, Lord God. Even as the word goes forth, heal those sick bodies, Lord. Father, meet whatever the need is, Father, as the word is going forth. And I just commit myself into your hands now, Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Uh, Judges chapter 1, or chapter 6, I'm sorry. It says here, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel, and because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of, of the east, even they came up against them. And they encamped against them and destroyed the increase of the earth till thou come unto Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. Can you imagine that? The children of Israel were there planting and living out their lives, daily lives. And because they got so comfortable with their daily living, amen, they started worshiping idols. Well, let, me, let, me dab in, let me dab with this in my life. Let me, let's do this. And it become something else became their God. And so God said, well, I'm not going to share my glory with anybody else. So he allowed the Midianites to come in and take everything that they had. To a point where they were building caves in order to hide from them. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they and their camels were without number. This is the amount of the uh, 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 Midianites. And they entered into the land to destroy it. I wonder if that isn't what's happening in, 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 the, in the U.S. today. <clears throat> And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And that's where God wants, want, wanted them to be. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. Let's, let's skip down to verse... Number 11. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Ophrah, and, pertain and pertained unto Joash the Abizrite. And his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. Gideon was in his comfort zone. That's all he needed to do. He was in his comfort zone, just like many of us. We're just in our comfort zone. As long as I know, if I just keep doing this, I'm protected. I just keep doing this. But see, God had something planned for him. Amen. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. Amen. With that, you may be seated. Praise God. You know, I, I, I often think about this scripture, how... Here's Gideon, and you have to remember the setting of this, of, of, of this story is that the children of Israel were already in the promised land. Think about that. The children of Israel were already in their promised land. This was after, after Joshua. This was after, uh, and so it was the time of the judges where they didn't have a king that was ruling, uh, 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 that was ruling over them. And so Gideon, of course, became one, ended up being one of the judges that, uh, that helped save Israel. And you can read about it for the next two or three chapters. But here's Gideon. Gideon is presented to us here at this moment. And, where, and what is Gideon doing? He is hiding from the Midianites. He is hiding from, from what? Uh, because he's afraid as well. He got to a point where he was just like everybody else. Amen. Whatever they were doing, whatever, we're just hiding. We're trying to do this uh, uh, because 
and not understanding the reason why he, they got to the point where they got. Because later on, we, we, we see here, um, if, if you read in verse 13, it says, And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? <laughs> I wonder if that's what we don't ask ourselves when things are not going right in our lives. What is it that's happening in our home or is not happening in our home? What is it that's happening in your life spiritually or not happening in your life spiritually? And then when things start coming, falling apart, Lord, why is this happening to us? It's the same thing that Gideon was asking. But the Lord at the beginning told us clearly that the children of Israel had done evil in the sight of the Lord. They started worshiping other gods. In other words, putting other gods before them. Maybe it was... An individual or a man or, 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 or idols or whatever it was. Maybe it was their businesses. Maybe it was money. Maybe it was their, their education. Whatever it was, something was an idol for, in, in, their, in their life. And God said, I will not share my glory Amen. with any other idol. Amen. God is not going to share his glory with anything, amen, that you put before him. Amen. You either serve God or you don't. Man, it's like Joshua stood up. He said, he said, uh, you, you either serve the Lord or, or but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. And so, and so Gideon is here and he said, oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told, uh, told us of saying, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? So all he knew was everything that they had, to, the message that they had been told <laughs> of what God did back then. Amen. But you see, you realized, and we see it, no matter how much you know the message or how many people have come into the message or know the word, amen, people backslide. <laughs> You, you can have known this message 50, 70, even met the prophet, shook his hand. That doesn't stop you from backsliding and, 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 forsaking, and forsaking the Lord. But you remember, the Lord never forsook you. And you'll find them again where you left them. Amen? It doesn't guarantee, amen, that, that, you, had, that you have to continually. It's not just about one experience with God. It's a continuous experience with God. Amen? And that's, that's, a, that's a responsibility that's for, for you and I in this hour. Amen. When the going gets tough, amen, you got to get tougher. Amen. amen. Things are, pressure is going to come on us. Life is going to happen. Right. But is that the time to quit and leave and stop going to church and, 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 and leaving the word? No. Right. That's actually the time for you to get stronger. Amen. Your family depends on it. Your, your, your children depend on it. Amen. Your, your, your friends, your co-workers, people are looking at your life. And they see you as an example, but you're a quitter. They can't gain strength from you. They're not going to get strength from you. And then you're boohooing in the corner. Why do people don't talk to me or like me or have any confidence in me? Because you're a quitter. Spiritual quitter. And that's what Gideon had become. Gideon, amen. But see, the Lord had seen something. Because the Lord doesn't see the way we see things. Because this, this is how the Lord appeared to him. He said, the Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And there was Gideon hiding, amen, threshing, threshing there right next to the wine press. <laughs> I hope they don't see me over here. And here comes this man that appears before him. And he says, thou Gideon, you are a man of valor. Can you imagine that? You being scared and then, and then somebody comes before you and says, you know what? You're not a scared person. You're not a scaredy cat. And then that's when Gideon starts asking. He's like, well, Lord. But he didn't know that it was the Lord talking to him at that moment. Amen. Let's continue reading. He said, did not the Lord bring us from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us. And delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Of course, forgetting the reason why. <laughs> As many of us do sometimes. And the Lord looked upon him and said, 
go in this thy might. Now, can you imagine you sitting there and you're, and, you're, and you're doing what you're, you know, you're in your comfort zone. You're doing your daily task. Don't, ever, don't nobody get me out of my comfort zone. I want to just do this and that's it. Don't, no, don't get me out of my comfort zone. And, and, and if you do, whew, people get upset when they get out of their comfort zone. It's almost like when you sit in someone's seat at church. <laughs> Look at their faces when they come in. Oh, my. I wonder if that's the, the face that Gideon had. What is he talking about? I'm a mighty man of valor. I'm a strong man. Go in this thy might, he said. To go to do what? I, I, I wonder if that's what if that's what Gideon, Gideon is asking. Go to do what? Yeah. Go in what might? See, that's what the thing is, is that the Lord wants us to go and serve him, amen, in what you have already. You, you don't need anything else. You don't need, amen, go with what you have right now. No, but I got to wait until I get a better person and, and I start go, going to church uh, 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 every single Sunday, every single Wednesday. No, go with what you have now. Right, amen. amen. Because with what you have now, it will lead you, amen, to go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday and, and, and read the word and study and meditate and pray and be the, the, the husband and the father and the mother and the, and, and the wife that you're supposed to be. Go with what you have now, the faith that what you have now. God is capable to use that. Amen. What did God tell Moses? Amen. Pick up that stick that you have in your hand. And with that stick, I'll do miracles. Amen. God wants to use your stick because I preached here a few months ago. Amen. He wants to use what you have. So he's telling Gideon, he said, go with thou, go, uh, go in this thy might. Amen. Why? Because he's going to take care of the rest. We do our part, he'll do the rest. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And thou shalt save Israel. Look what he's telling him. Thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Praise the Lord Jesus. And he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewithal shall I save Israel? In other words, with what am I going to save Israel with? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. So now he's making excuses just like Moses was. But you know what? God loves it when, when there's a person that doesn't really want to do what he wants to do, what he wants him to do. Those are the ones he wants to use. Those are the ones that he's going to work miracles and wonders through. Amen. Amen. The one that's, that's clamoring to, 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 I'll just take a preacher as an example. The one that's wanting to really just preach, that's the one you need to be careful of. <laughs> the one that really wants to get up and do something at church and just, just re- you be careful. Amen. Those are the ones that you have to be careful with because, amen, the person... Uh, I don't, I don't know who, it's not, it's, preaching is not fun. <laughs> it's not the, 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 you know what the, in, 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 the, in America, the, the most undervalued position in, in America is a, a pastor. According to, to, to the, to the censuses and things that they've done. It's the most undervalued position or, or I think I'm saying the right word. Or the, the, the most underappreciated is a pastor. So I don't know why anybody would even want, want to be a pastor. <laughs> but if you're really God called, amen, you're going to be doing what God called you to do. When you don't want to do it, amen, that's the one that God says, all right, that's who I want. That's what I want because I know it won't be him, amen, dealing with the people. It'll be me through him. And he will allow me to deal with the people, amen, the way I want to do it. You see, God is all about getting the glory out of this. Amen. That's what he's about. He's not going to share his glory with anybody else. And it's not about the man, and it's not about, about his glory. We appreciate the man. We appreciate what God has done. Amen. But it's about God ultimately, and he gets the glory. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. 
Amen. I appreciate all the men, you know, that, that I, have, I have sat under, you know, from the denominational church, from the Baptist church that I was in, even in the Jehovah's Witness, even the Catholic church. I appreciate the priests that, 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 that helped me, you know, go through First Communion and stick out my tongue to take the wafer and all of that. They helped me with something with God, you know. I appreciate all of that. But it was ultimately leading me to have a relationship with God. Amen. And not with the individual. Amen. It's ultimately about God. Praise the Lord. And, the, and, and so, and he said unto him, O my Lord, wherewithal shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. Verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one as one man. Now, let's let's read this quote here, Brother Bram said, because I, I've always, as I was looking at this, I couldn't help to think, you know, of of that mother eagle that Brother Branham talks about, where she makes that nest very comfortable for her eaglets, for her eggs that are going to be born. She makes sure that that. When she makes that nest, that it's going to be very comfortable for them, so it doesn't hurt them when they're tender and they're and they're small. You see, and with that same beak that she feeds them, they start growing, right? They start growing and they start getting to a point where now, wait a second, these these kids are going to have to fly just like me too. How am I going to get them out of this place? Almost like some of the parents when we start thinking when our kids are turning 18, 19, 20, 21. Now, I'm not going to kick my kids out, but I'm just saying, you know, sometimes, we, we, sometimes we, we, we think that that's the best for them, and that's fine. And that might be the best thing for them, right? But you see, at some point, our children, amen, they're going to have to take up wings and fly. And that's what God, amen, wants to do with us. At some point, we got to take up wings spiritually and fly. Amen. It's, it's, it, we, we've had enough, uh, you know, that same beak that, that, that the Lord has been feeding us with, amen, that same beak now starts destroying and taking up that rabbit skin, that squirrel skin, all that stuff, everything, amen, and becomes, and then the, 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 the eaglets, they're, oh my goodness, what's going on? It's all prickly now. <laughs> it's not soft and plush. We're not falling asleep like we used to. They're, they're not rocking us to sleep anymore. You know, now they're, they're, they're tearing our hides now with the preaching. Well, then, that's what we need sometimes. We need our hides to be torn, me included. But you see, those eaglets, amen, they, they, they have to have a reason to, to, to get out of there. Amen. You got to have a reason, amen, to get out of your comfort zone. God's going to make sure that you get out of your comfort zone some way or another. Because we're just too comfortable with life. We're just too comfortable. You know, my wife and me, we were talking about the other night, we were saying, you know, she, she was saying, you know, I, I'd like to maybe change the, 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 the ceiling fan in our, in our room. You know, it's getting a little older and stuff. I start thinking about some of those bathrooms we've been in Honduras and stuff and in, in, in brothers and sisters' houses. And she started thinking about the same thing. And like, you know, the ceiling fan is just fine. <laughs> it's just fine. <laughs> when you start thinking, you start seeing the other side of things. You won't think all those things are so important. You'll start thinking about better ways to spend your money. You won't think that all that stuff is, it's nice, it's fine. If you can do it, that's wonderful. But the ceiling fan is just fine. It still works, it still rotates, it still gives air. <laughs> it's just that we wanted, you know, some, something that kind of matched the, the rest of the decor. But it's not a need. It was only a want. Right? And so God, amen, wants us to start 
uh, you know, wants, loves to get his children out of their comfort zones. Amen. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't want you to have a nice ceiling fan in your house. <laughs> Especially if those blades are like this. It's time to get another ceiling fan. <laughs> right? But in the hour that we're living in, saints, what are we looking at? Are we looking up or we keep looking horizontally at everything around us and see what we can obtain in this world and what we get? And man, because none of that you're taking with you. None of that that you're, you're going to, I've, I've never seen a U-Haul truck behind a hearse. None of it you're taking with us. Only the things that you do for God. Amen. 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 Is what's going ahead right. and what will be presented before him. Now, Brother Branham would say it like this. This is what he would say. He says, so you know what happens. The old mother comes into that nest and she takes that same beak. That, that she daubed it all up with and pulls every bit of that sheepskin out, every bit of that rabbit fur out, and throws the thing out of the nest. Oh, it's, it's, she, it's, she, and she does it. It's, it's doesn't leave, it doesn't look pretty. She does it uh, in a rough way, right? She makes the nest so miserable till they can't even set down those little eaglets. Right? I just wonder how comfortable us we are, you know, in, this La in, the, in Laodicea that we're living in. When God has given us and he's just tearing, tearing all that fur out, you know, he's, and we're still trying to just kind of put the fur back on. No, I want it there and you're stapling it together and everything. I like my comforts. I love my comforts. I love Laodicea, yeah. me included. We love it. Right, you know, God knows how to make you willing to do things, Brother Branham said. God knows how to make you willing to do things. That's happened to the many of you family. Certainly it is. He just pulls all that soft pad out so you walk on thorns. Yeah. Yeah. My. Every time he sets down, it's, uh, it's, it's on a thorn. He jumps up. He becomes discouraged after a while, that, that little eaglet. And I think if there was ever a time that the Pentecostal church ought to be discouraged is now. He continues to say, we've denominated ourselves. Now, he's talking to the Pentecostal church in that day and to the denominations of that day. But you see, we sometimes we make our own denominations even in one church. We make our own little cliques and our own little ideas, and, and and brother and sister don't see it that way. I don't know if I'm going to go shake their hand or, or even say hello. We make our own ideas, and we make our own judgments about people, because maybe of somebody or some family member told you about them or 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 or, or something. But you see, that's our own little denominations within our own church. But God is doing everything he can to pull all that out. Amen. Saints, it's time to go home. Amen. It's time to go home for us to be pitter-pattering and, and having feelings and stuff against each other. Amen. It's not time for that. It's time for us to actually draw closer to each other. Amen. Especially as the time of the, as the, his coming is soon at hand. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We've denominated ourselves, built great barriers of lines, Brother Brown continues to say. One's assemblies, the other one's a oneness, the other one is this. Well, I'm, a, I'm a brother Bob, I'm, I'm, I'm a brother Aaron, I'm a brother Wade, I'm a brother Dale, I'm a, amen? Amen, I'm of God. Praise the Lord, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm with any brother that speaks the word of the Lord behind that pulpit. Amen? Well, if brother so and so is not doing, I don't think it's I don't think it's it, it, it's too valid. Is it the word of the Lord coming out of his lips, or is he up there just playing games? Praise God. The other is this and that, and the other one, and and then we just built such lines and barriers till there is a stick stick here and a stick stick there. What's the matter? God's fixing to take us out of it, he says. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
That's exactly what it is. Them little old eagles get tired setting down on them thorns. Amen. Eventually, they got to get up and fly. And that's what God wants to do, amen, when we're in our comfort zones. He wants us, amen, to just fly for ourselves instead of just crying, go and speak. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. And that's what God was trying to do with Gideon, amen. He was in a rut. He was in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in his comfort zone. And God knew that, that, he had, that he had potential, amen, to do something great for him. And so he started calling directly, telling, calling the things that, that were not. As though they were. <laughs> Telling him that he was mighty when he was not not displaying that. And that's how sometimes, you know, when we're dealing with our children, you know, I'm getting back to the parenting now. When we're dealing with our children, amen. We, so we can't deal with our children, amen, the same way. You know, some, some, some of, some, maybe one of our children, our child is, 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 is a different way and needs to be talked to a different way, you see. You know, or, 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 or dealt with a certain way because you know that that's what's going to work. You see? But if you have a cookie cutter approach and, you, and, and you're like, why did this one go this way or what? Hey, man, maybe you didn't come to the heart of that child or dealt with that child in, in his strength or in, in what he's. You see what I'm trying to say? Sometimes we have it as a cookie cutter, but that's not how God dealt with Gideon. God dealt with Gideon. You know, he could, have, he could have dealt with him the way he dealt with Moses at the burning bush. But that's not how he appeared to Gideon. He knew that that was not the way that was going to work and was going to get Gideon's reaction. Amen. So he dealt with Gideon and telling him, you know, you're, you're, you're strong. You know, sometimes our, our children, amen, when they're, when they're like just falling flat on their face and they're doing dumb stuff, you know what? You're, you're, you're smart. <laughs> you're, you, you're a very bright person. Just don't do that again. But that's how God dealt with the idiot. You see? Amen. Praise God. Now, the, the thing is, is that we can't grow, amen, if, if we're not challenged. If we're not challenged or stretched in any way, we're not going to be able to grow. Amen. The Christian life is about growth, right? Therefore, we have to be challenged by something in life. Even Paul, amen, had a challenge in his life. That he asked God multiple times, take it out of me. And God said, nope, my grace is sufficient. Amen. He didn't want that out of his life. Not because God didn't care for him or not because God was not concerned about that challenge that he had. Amen. But it was because that what was keeping him humble. It was keeping him in prayer. It was keeping him in humility and meekness and, and doing what he wanted him. Because ultimately who gets the glory is God. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. So we can't we can't grow if we're not if we're not challenged in life. Amen. If we're not if we're not going beyond our comfort zones. And this is where Gideon was at. Amen. This is what God was trying to do with Gideon. Amen. Was trying to get him out of his comfort zones because why? God knowing the beginning from the end, he knew what at what Gideon was going to do. He had to get him out of that wine press. Amen. Get him out of that comfort zone in order to get him to do what he wanted him to do. Praise God. You know, God has a plan for each and every one of us. And sometimes we buck at that. We buck at it and, 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 and we're like, no, I, I don't know. Listen, I, me included. I, I, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't want that in my life. Well, God, if he, if he loves you, and he, I know he does, he's a gentleman. And he's not going to force you to do anything. He's going to wait until you willingly want to walk in his word. Until you willingly want to walk. And what is his word? His will. Amen. When you willingly want to walk in his will, amen, then God is going to be able to use you to do the wonders that he wants to do through your life. Listen, I, I, I was really blessed by Sister Melissa's testimony on Sunday. How many heard his, her testimony? 
You know, my sister Melissa, she, 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 she didn't realize, amen, the impact that she was going to have by making the decision that she made about not wearing the, the, the pants scrubs at, 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 at at church at, at the hospital and it was she was wearing them the whole time but but then finally something happened and said you know what i want to be a witness for real and when she did that things changed <laughs> now everybody was like wait a second she has bravery enough to do that and other women started coming up to her asking her what can how can i do that now she's getting ready to talk to seven what is seventy seven thousand people uh, they're in the in the in the whole uh, the medical system there about how the the length of it needs to be and and, and all of that that's that's God right there but it ultimately took her to make that decision God didn't force her to make that decision something amen that she she got a revel- a revelation of some sort and revelation amen causes you to see things differently amen it causes you to, to act upon things in a different way when something truly has been revealed to you. Amen. You see things in a different way. Why isn't others seeing them that way? It's because God revealed it to you. Thank God for God's revelation. Thank God for his word has been revealed to you. Why, why are people so excited? Why are those people so excited about God's word? Amen. It's because they are, the word has been revealed to them. And that's why, they're, they're, that's why they, they can't get enough of it. Because they've seen something in God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. When, when the Lord takes you out of your comfort zone, amen, you see the reality that's ahead of you in a different way. And that's what happened to Gideon. Because, because look what. Look, look, look what happened to Gideon. Well, we're really here in a moment. Because I want you to notice that here... In, in in this same chapter, Gideon, um, he almost had like a, it, it was, I won't say, I'm not saying it's the new birth, but it's almost like a type kind of happened there. Because here in, in Judges 6 verse, verse 19, it says here, and Gideon went in and made ready a kid and unleavened cakes of an ephah of flour, the flesh he put in a basket and he put the broth in a pot and brought it out unto him under the oak and presented it. He presented it before this, this, this man that appeared to him. And the angel of God said unto him, take the flesh and the unleavened cakes and lay them upon this rock. In other words, upon an altar. Amen. And pour out the broth. And he did so. And look what the, what the angel of the Lord did. And the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh. And the unleavened cakes. Then the angel of the Lord departed out of his sight. Amen? Amen. It was almost, how is it that God wants us to present our bodies? As living sacrifices. Amen? amen. And it wasn't until, until Gideon, amen, got to this point, amen, that he's, he's now obeying what this man is telling him to do. To present the sacrifice, to do this. And when he did it the right way, when he got born again... <laughs> Then God could go in there and sacrifice or, or consume it. When you're born again, amen, you see things differently after that. You're not going to see the same threshing fold the same way again. You see the plan of God differently now. You see that God wants to use you in a great way. And you see what the potential of, 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 of your life is in the word. I hope you're understanding what I'm trying to say. After this experience that Gideon had right here, amen, he saw his life different now. Because now he's telling me I'm a strong man. I'm, I'm a mighty man of valor. I'm, I'm this, that, and the other. I didn't believe him at the moment, but now I, I present this sacrifice before him. He consumes it. Whoa. Fire does something. <laughs> it makes changes for sure. Praise God. In other words, Gideon became convinced and when you're convinced, you're concerned. Right, amen. Amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That's that's really how a true, uh, a, 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 you know, how a Christian's life should be. Right. Praise God. 
You should be convinced and concerned. Brother Branham says it like this. Now, now, this thing we have to do, if we can believe it and be concerned about it, watch, if we can believe it and be concerned about it, first we've got to be convinced that it is God. Then we're, when we're convinced, then we are concerned. Amen. Amen. If you're not convinced about something, you're not going to act upon it. Right? right? right. If I'm not convinced, amen, that, that, that we need to be in church, <laughs> I'm not going to be in church. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. But, right? If I'm not convinced about, you know, anything in, anything in life, if that's not become a reality to me or a revelation to me, then I'm not going to act upon it. I'm not going to, to do anything about it. But it wasn't so with Gideon. Gideon was convinced now that God had something, amen, for him. I hope that we're convinced that God has a plan for you. You know, you might be going through your daily life and, 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 and going through school and going, you know, and and not thinking, I'm wondering what I'm going to do later on in life. But you, you know, God, God already saw that before the foundation of the world. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He, he knows. He's waiting you for, for you to come and, 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 and make the decision and make the choice. Amen. That he, he knows you'll, you'll come to. Right. Praise God. Right. But you have to come to that your own self. Right. Just as Gideon had to come to it. You see, the Lord was there telling him, you're a mighty man of valor. You're this, that, and the other. But Gideon had to, con he had to be convinced of that himself. Right. Amen. And, and that's what the new birth does in our lives. It convinces us, amen, that the word is true. Amen. All the word is true. Amen. And that, and that not just the part about me being born again, but now I see the whole, the whole, uh, the po the whole picture now amen. has become more clear. You may not understand everything in detail, but you see the essence Amen. of things. It's one thing that brother, brother, when, a few years ago when Brother Wade and me were talking, you know, and we were, we were, we were uh, when we were started coming uh, here to the church, and, you know, I've been coming to the mess, a message church since 2000, right? That's when I came into the message, and, 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 but, but, but then I started seeing things in a, in a different way. And it was one of the things that he mentioned to me was that you now get the essence of the message. You see? And that's important. Amen. You get the essence of the message. And that's the reason why Brother Brandon could say, if you don't see Christ from Genesis to Revelation, just read over again. Because it's there. It's all about Christ. And what is it? What did Paul say? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. That's what, that's what this thing is all about. It's not about rules and regulations and do's and don'ts. That's what the world wants to make it. That's what the nominal world wants to make it. Amen. But it's, it's about Christ living through you, wanting to do great things through your life. Amen. And it's not just about, and I know I say these things all the time, but it's not, sometimes we think that it's great things like I'm going to go to the cemetery up here in Lula next, and I'm going to just raise all the dead that are there. That's not what God called you to do. God didn't call you to go uh, and, and, and I'm going to just heal all the sick at, the, at the, the hospital there in Gainesville. That's not what God called you to do. Maybe he did. And I can't, I, I can't, I couldn't argue with that. But for the majority of us, I don't think God has called us to do that. But I see some parents here. I see some, some families here. I see some, some brothers and sisters here that maybe God called you, as I mentioned last time, you know, to fold your, your husband's socks in a, uh, in a better attitude, yeah. you know, or you know, or, or, or tell your wife, I love you in a, not in a way that you feel that you have to do that, but in a way that you really love her. I mean, she is beyond a shadow of doubt. She knows that you love her. That's what I'm talking about. That's what a new birth experience will make you do. It'll make you be genuine, which is something we're lacking in this nowadays. People are not genuine anymore. 
And when you do see a genuine someone that's genuine, you notice it because you notice so much fakery around you. It's become a, 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 a life of fakery. Social media fakery, AI fakery, all kinds of fakery. But when you see something true and genuine, it stands out because that's what the people are looking for. And especially if when it's something genuine that's, that, and that person has a new birth, you know that that's Christ showing that genuineness in their life. God help us to be more like that. I, I, I want to be more like that. It's, it's hard, you know, circumstances and situations and things. You know, you, you want to, it's so easy to get in your own bubble. And, and I want to be in my own island and that's it. And, and it, it's, but God wants us out of our comfort zones. Because God has great things for us to do. Amen. What is the, uh, I'm finishing up here. What does the word convinced mean? And here's what it means. is completely certain about something. Brother Brandon preached the message called convinced and then concerned. Amen. And this is what he was talking about. Completely certain about something. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You sisters who've had children, you know that you had those children. I mean, you're convinced that you had them. I could probably ask you the multiple reasons why you're convinced. And you would tell me why. You felt the pain. You, 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 you see them before you. Amen. You know all about it. You're convinced. Praise God. It also means firm in one's belief. Firm in one's belief with regard to a particular cause or issue. And, you know, you cannot look at that as a revelation. You know, when I saw, when I saw the uh, uh, one God, amen, <laughs> you can't take that. Coming from a nominal world, I know some of us didn't, do, didn't come from that, but coming from a nominal world, and when you see one God, that stands out big time. Nobody can take that away from me. Raise God. I can have my, my most down day. And, 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 and maybe fail God. Amen. But you can't take that out of me. And his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's a revelation that just stands firm. Amen. Praise the Lord. You're convinced. And then what is the part about being concerned? Look what the word concerned means. To become involved with something. Or worried about something. Now not worried that you are like biting your nails worried. Because that actually makes you sick. Right? And it makes your finger, fingers sting a bit. <laughs> but, but you're concerned. I mean, you're, you're, you, you want to be part of that. You see? Right? When I, when, I, when I was revealed that water baptism in the Lord Jesus Christ was the right way to be baptized, I went immediately and got to get, go get baptized. Right? That is the concerned part. Right? You do something about it. Most of us, or a lot of us, we're convinced that things are true. We just don't do anything about it. <laughs> we're not concerned enough to do anything about, about that that we know is true. So we just kind of sit idle in our comfort zones. And we just kind of let life happen to us. And whatever happens, and not knowing that you have a say in things, because God has a plan for you. Right? God wants to use you in a mighty way. Praise the Lord. And we don't need to be idle. Praise God. So that's what concern means. To become involved with something or worried about something. Amen. And so when Gideon became con convinced and concerned... Here's some of the things that, that he was able to do. Amen. By the Lord's command, he destroyed Baal's altar and cut down the grove next to it. The whole time that he was there in his comfort zone, the, his dad had an altar to Baal. <laughs> and it was sitting there. He wasn't doing anything about it. When he was convinced or got the new birth, I'm not saying that he did. I'm just saying it was a type. He had an experience with God. Let me just say it that way. He got convinced and concerned. And the Lord said, go tear that, 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 that altar down. Raise one up for me. That's exactly what he did. 
Why? He knew what God, what God's word said. Amen. Right? And when you know what God's word says, it puts you to action. Right, when you're convinced about God's word, it puts you to action. Amen. Gideon was convinced. And he went and tore down that altar. And the man of the city, the next day, they got up and they said, what in the world happened here? As, what's all this? What's all this? And they got upset that their altar was destroyed. But Gideon didn't care. <laughs> he was doing the Lord's work. Amen. That's what happens when you're convinced and you're concerned. You continue pu pushing forward. Amen. Praise God. Another thing that he did is Gideon managed to build a very small army of 300. It started, I think, at, as 30,000 or something like that. But God said, no, that's too many to fight the Midianites. And, and the Midianites had like over 200-something th thousand. But God said, now compare 30,000 to 200,000. That's still a big gap there. <laughs> but God said, that's still too many. So we know the story. And he gets it down all the way down to 300 men. I can imagine, you know, with the people... The, the guys that were with Gideon are like, I know Gideon, Gideon, I know the Lord spoke through you, but I know deep down in there, they're probably thinking, I don't, <laughs> 300 men against 200,000? Yeah. I'd be scared too. And maybe Gideon was probably thinking, Lord, is this going to work? But he was called. Right, he was called from the beginning, and, and the Lord told him and said, you're going to save Israel. Right. Right. You're going to do it and go with, with that your might. Amen. And, we, of course, he defeats the Midianites. And you can read about it in the chat. We don't have time to do that. But Gideon also defeats the, uh, the, 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 their king, Zeba and Z Zalmunna. Not just defeats the Midianites, but also their kings. Amen. And completely saves Israel. Amen. When you're convinced and concerned, when you're out of your comfort zone, then God can use you. Amen. When he was out of his comfort zone, then God could use them. Amen. Praise God. So that's my whole thought, amen, for tonight, amen. 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 Am, am, am I too comfortable in life? Maybe God has not had not too many, too many trials are happening in my life. Praise the Lord. No, you should be worried about that. <laughs> you should be worried. Amen, because God loves to test his children. Not because they know, that, not because he loves to just test them. It's because he wants you to realize where you're standing. In the position that you're at. So that you can move out of that. You see, God came to Gideon, a man, in the position where he was at. He was there in the threshing floor. Minding his own business and in his comfort zone. He came in there, amen, and took him out of his comfort zone, right? In a, in a very in a very uh, miraculous way. Amen. And then after that, what happens when you're convinced and concerned, you're focused right, to move forward with your goal, yeah. right? Amen. Nothing else, amen, distracts you anymore. Things can happen, birds will fly over your head, and distractions will be there, but you're focused on the goal amen. of the mark of the high calling, as Paul said, amen? Amen, amen. we got to get out of here, saints. Amen. I'm tired of this pest house getting fat and I got to lose weight uh, since November I just went off the deep end and I got to get back to my what I need to do and <laughs> but man sour gummy worms are so good <laughs> I just had a whole bag of sour gummy bears last night anyways I want to pull I want to if the brothers could help me pull this up for just a moment and with this we're going to finish uh, I'm pull something up here real quick You excuse me. When I pull this up, I know my my wife and my daughters. They'll know. They'll know what the what this is. My wife is over there, like, what is he gonna do now? <laughs> what is he gonna show? <laughs> Can y'all see that? 
Now they know. <laughs> now I know he, the reason why I'm showing this is because there's a man in Brazelton, Georgia. He's he's a black guy that he he's a jogger. He's he's fit and you know, and he looks just like this. Now I literally typed this in with AI. I I I put in in, in AI. I put Please make me a picture with a, a guy with a do-rag on, headphones, sunglasses, and punch in the air. And that's what it came out. And it was pretty close. Now, the guy, when he's jogging, he's always, he always jogs and he's always, he'll always walking really fast. And this is what he's doing the whole time. And he's got his headphones on, and he's just <laughs> nonstop. And every time I drive by, I, I, I come, I go home from work. Man, that made me tired. <laughs> huh? I know I need to do that. <laughs> this is what he's doing the whole time, and he looks ridiculous. But he don't care. He is focused. And it's always between 5, between 5.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's always between those times. In Brazelton at that time, uh, there's a lot of traffic there on 211, as some of you all may know. A lot of traffic. He don't care. He's focused on his goal. Crossing the street, still going at it. And I don't know how long he does it, but every time I look at it, I'm like, you know what? There's a sermon in that. <laughs> you know, he's, he's pressing on the mark of the high calling for, his, for whatever he's trying to achieve. Now, he doesn't look quite as, as buff as, as this guy. You know, these AI images came out. He's, he's a thinner guy, but he is, he's focused. I think that's it. He's a focused guy. But you know what? When you're focused and you're convinced about something, you're going to do it no matter what anybody else says. You're going to achieve what, what God called you to do, no matter what anybody else says. And, you know, the whole world can be, you know, zooming around you and they're doing their own things. They're, they're driving their vehicles and you're, you're out there, but you're focused on what God called you to do. So, look, as, as they say, stay in your lane. Man, stay in your lane. I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm talking about, you know, uh, you know, something making money or whatever like that. But I'm talking about stay in your lane, spiritual lane. Don't get sidetracked. There's so much to sidetrack us out nowadays. This man, amen, and he's, he's pretty fit. I don't know if he's married, and I don't know if he, you know, he may have a car at the house. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. I, wanted, I want one day to just stop by and tell him, hey, you know, what, what motivates you to, to do that? I've never seen a, a person jogging in the middle of the road just doing this. And he's nonstop the whole time. But he's focused. Maybe God just put him there for me so, to help me. Amen. Stay focused. Amen. 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 Don't let every other thing around you just sidetrack you. Amen. Amen. Don't let every other trials and situations and problems and other people, amen, sidetrack what God's called you to do. Amen. Stay in your lane, and God can use you, amen. That's what Gideon had to do, and that's what God wants to do with you, amen. Praise God. Stay, stay focused, amen. Stay, and, let, and let God, amen, get us out of our comfort zones when he needs to, amen. Thank God for that. Amen. You love the Lord. Amen. God bless you. We'll have the musicians come. Maybe one day I'll follow behind the man. Maybe you might see me doing that. And I can get to his level. <laughs> Praise God. How many love the Lord? Amen. Hey, man. You know, sometimes we could just take the word. Amen. Simple, simple, uh, simple uh, uh, examples in the word and just apply them in our lives. And, 
And uh, it's, it's, it's going home time, saints. Amen. And, 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 and so what's what we want to do? Praise the Lord. Just stay focused in this hour. Last time we talked about Joshua, courage. Amen. This time we want to talk about staying focused. Amen. And being, being okay with God taking us out of our comfort zones. We need that. Amen. Praise God. Let's sing something, Brother Boyd. I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, keep me Let's stand to our from feet. All, all wrong. I'll be satisfied as long as I walk. Let me walk close to thee. God help us. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to Jesus, 
We just thank God, amen. Who wants a walk, closer walk with God? Amen. We all do so. Continue to remember everyone that's going to be out this weekend. Just remember them in your prayers. In your prayers for Bob's family, I think. And I think Brother, uh, Brother Ryan and his family. I think Brother Joseph and Rachel are going to be out as well. So just remember all of them in prayer and bring them back safely. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. And uh, and so any all hearts and minds are clear. Amen. Brother Wade, anything? All right. Let's just let's just go to the Lord in prayer and we'll be dismissed after this prayer. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, once again for the opportunity to have open back the pages of your word. Thank you, Lord God, for encouraging us, us, Lord. Lord Gideon, Father, then would have never thought, Lord Jesus, that many, 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 many years later, Lord God, his name would still be mentioned, Lord. And his life would be preached about, Father. And Lord Jesus, here we are in 2024, Lord God, still talking about Gideon. Lord God, and he surrendered his, his will over to you, Lord Jesus, and did great, mighty things, Father. And so that's what we want to do, Lord, in this hour. Help us, Father, to lay aside all the weights and the sins that easily beset us so that we can serve you properly in this hour. Lord, forgive us for our wrongs, Lord, our sins, Lord, and our rebellious attitudes at times, Lord, when we know we should be going a certain way, but we buck at that, Lord God. And you're there, Father God, waiting patiently, Lord Jesus, for us to come to the realization, Lord God, to get back in step, Lord, as as our prophet, Lord, saw the bride, Father, there, Lord God, and she was getting out of step, Lord, and and Father, he shouted, he screamed out, get back in step, Lord, get back in line. So, Lord God, that's what we want, Father. We want to get back in step, Lord, and step with your word. And, and we know your, your word is your will. Grant it, Lord Jesus, we commit all of the ones that are going to be traveling into your hands. Protect them, watch over them, keep them, Lord, and bring them back with us, Lord. Continue to be with Brother Dale. Be, continue to be with the family, Lord God. Strengthen them, Lord. And we just commit ourselves into your hands this evening now in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Just sing this as you're, as you're leaving. Close to thee.